Right. Okay. okay. I will call to order the transportation committee meeting of October 4th, 2022. Do we have a roll call, please? Chaplin here. Desart here. Krajewski here. Ozog here. Michalski here. And Zay here. All right. Chairman's remarks. We have a report from our chief as uh, far as his testimony in Springfield. And we have post session regarding a parcel of property that we want to get a second look at the evaluation. So hopefully that will be solved. I believe we have no public comments. I have a motion to approve the committee minutes of September 20, 2022. So moved, second. Motion to second. Any changes, alterations, or corrections? All in favor say aye. 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 Totally see aye. Say aye. Next is agenda item six and action item. I have a motion to approve 2022-83 agreement between the county so of and Acelia Inc. for annual subscription service of software second. integration between Acelia online permitting software and Blue Bean land review software for the period of December 1st, 2022 to November 30, 2023. Department of Transportation is $7,087.50 and a total contract of $28,350. I have a motion a second. Are there any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 All the ayes have it. Next is agenda item seven, budget transfers. May I have a motion to approve a budget transfer of $250,000 from contingencies to fuel and lubricants to so cover the increased gas price for the remainder of FY 2022. I have a motion and second. Motion no, second. 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 Thank oh, you. Sorry. I know. Jim? Yeah, no, just, I mean, do we think it's going to be enough for the rest of the year? I mean, how much has it impacted us so far? Um, I know this isn't the first increase. The problem, we, we budgeted more for this year. The problem is we've, we're almost going to go through it already. So we're hopeful that this gets us through November, which is the start of snow and ice. And so if we don't have any snow and ice, we're hope, hopeful. We are see, starting to see it was going down. And we we're kind of watching it week by week, but also now it's going the other direction. Well, there was something on news yesterday where they think gas prices are going to spike a dollar or more. So, uh, what happens with us if that happens? We have contingencies in Well, that'll be the FY23 budget. That'll be one of the first things uh, we do. Is well, our biggest thing is get through snow and ice. So yeah. we're front loaded. You know, that'll be spent, and then we can manage. Uh, we'll you know, keep my fingers crossed. This will get us through. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, yeah, and I'm all for the no snow and snow and ice. Too. <laughs> <laughs> Right, any other questions, comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Oh, the ayes have it. Next is agenda item eight, procurement requisitions. Motion to approve DTP 027722, recommendation for approval so, of to Great second. USA Inc. for professional standing services upon request of the Division of Transportation, $80,000. And uh, contract not to exceed $100,000. And a motion to second. Any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it. Next is 8B, the motion to approve 2022-84, recommendation to approve a kind of priority products thing to furnish and deliver weatherhead hydraulic fittings, hoses, connectors, mm -hmm. as needed Second. for product transportation, transportation for a contract not to exceed $29,900. I have a motion to second or any questions. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it. Next is agenda under nine agreements. Motion to approve DTR 039622, a resolution between the DuPage County Fair Share Impact Fee Individual Assessment Agreement with so Prince Realty Group. I have a motion to second. Any questions? I didn't hear a second. I didn't hear a second. Sorry. sorry. I thought I had it. I'm sorry. All right. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Close the ayes have it. Next is agenda item 10, amending resolutions. I have amendment to approve DTR 0382A-22. So moved. Issued to our Beckman Company on behalf of Milton College of Road District for the Lambert Road Project Correction of Project Section Number. I believe we have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed the ayes have it. Now we go to discussion. 11A is a discussion on County Farm Road at the Great Western Trail update. Chris? Yeah, so I wanted to um, provide everybody just kind of an update of where we are since we last met on the, uh, on the alignment study. I also wanted to discuss many of you, all of you, received an email from a resident um, uh, familiar with the, with the Great Western Trail, um, citing some accident data that uh, <coughs> that they indicated had not been shared with the committee the um, that's not the case so i just wanted to kind of go through and give you an update on the analysis of where we're at but also the safety the, the accidents um, that have occurred and uh, next step so real quick as you know we looked at this intersection of county farm and the great western trail two times 
both 2015 and most recently. And as a result of, of traffic counts uh, usage, traffic studies, uh, traffic studies um, it's been determined that a signal is not warranted at that existing crossing. We also looked at the uh, public crossing of Hawthorne Lane, about 500 feet to the south. And we also looked at that crossing, taking into account uh, traffic volumes, um, as well as pedestrian bike usage of the parallel trail to County Farm Road um, at that location. In both instances, neither location warrants a traffic signal. Um, subsequent to the 2015 study, we did put overhead signing in to better define the location of the Great Western Trail. We've also done it at Bloomingdale Road and I believe Glen Ellen Road um, as well. So we're consistent on those mid-block crossings. Um, we've also, um, um, uh, at the request, at the last meeting, what came out of that was two um, asks of DOT. Number one, um, look at the speed limit. And so we did a speed study and determined that the 45 mile an hour speed limit uh, could be lowered to 40. So that's already gone through board. It's been approved and the signs have been posted. In addition, we were asked to do an alignment study, um, an evaluation of whether that path could be realigned to an existing signal lines intersection, specifically St. Charles Road. So we'll talk about that um, in, in a moment, but I do want to jump to the safety um, aspects. Again, um, back when we first introduced this topic, Back in February of this year, uh, we had talked about next steps and safety. And one of the questions I think was raised by Member Chaplin, um, there had been a single accident in 2020 at that location. Uh, the state of Illinois database runs about two years in arrears. So it doesn't always come up when you look at things from one year to the next. So there's always a couple years in arrear. There was a single incident involving um, um, an accident uh, between a motorist and a bicyclist as they were crossing. The reporting officer take into account the um, the conditions and witness accounts did indicate that at the time uh, the motorist did have the right of way and it was an unfortunate incident um, on the, the, the bicyclist um, crossing or maybe not obeying the, the stop sign. It was, in, it was in 2020, September of 2020. Um, since then, the five years prior, there had not been an incident. The markings, the signage were all identified to be in place both on the trail but as well um, on County Farm Road. Wasn't the bicycle person the one that caused that? Incident? Well, it was, um, I, I, I think what, I think the re re reviewing the, the report it indicated that the motorist had the right of way at the time of the incident. Thank you. Was it fatal? Um, no, oh. no, it was an injury, um, not a fatal, but every, you know, injury. Had there been potential. anything we'd have done, we'd have been more proactive. We've done two engineering studies, so we've really done our due diligence, and that was one incident, and I think the, the person was an issue, but if there's a public safety issue, a realignment, we'll address it and discuss right. it like we always do. Yeah. And then at the 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 other, the correspondence you received talked about two accidents at that location. The reality is it was actually at Hawthorne, 400, 500 feet to the oh. south, and it involved, uh, there's two incidents actually there. Normally, when we do our traffic studies, we look at three years, and so it would not have been in the 2015 because the three years prior would have been 13, 14, and 15. And when we did the most recent study, the incident was in 2018. So that incident did not come up. It was actually a vehicle on Hawthorne. So if you're looking at the exhibit and you imagine you're on Hawthorne going east and making a right turn, they began to make the right turn at the same time the bicyclists thought that the car had seen them and they bumped. Uh, both cited each other as being um, at fault. There was an incident that we did pick up in our traffic study when we looked at the signal warrants more, most recently, and that involved a northbound vehicle on County Farm at Hawthorne turning left and not seeing the pedestrian in the crosswalk and, and again, um, colliding. So um, those occurred. What time of day was that? You know, I, if I recall, I did mark that. I thought it was the so time of year, December at 6.42 a.m. Yes. Oh, yeah. So like dusk yeah. in the evening yeah. or right then in dawn the morning, dusk, dawn yeah. and dusk are so dangerous. So it's hard to see those. Yeah, 12, 9, 21 at 6.42 a.m. So less than a year ago, early in the morning, most oh. likely uh, dark conditions. So and, this was at Hawthorne. and that was at Hawthorne, 500 feet south of the Great Western Trail. So I just wanted to, to update you because I know the email came kind of suggesting that that the Great County Farm at the Great Western Trail had had two or multiple accidents. Again, the data that we have um, only uh, does indicate the one incident in 2020, which would be due diligence. Yes, thank you. Well, I think, yeah, I, if I may, I think there's a misconception that this committee does not care about safety. Well, yeah, and that, that, that was because of an article that wasn't even, what do you want to call, is that what you call it journalism? I don't know, but yes, there was an issue with that. And that we, we've been so proactive on this 
that it bothers me big time. And I just, yeah, I, I think it's very important that the public know, I mean, that's our job, you know, right. that is our job providing public safety. Um, Absolutely. And I'm glad that we're looking at the maybe alignments to see right. if there's something, you know, because I think we've had a little conversations about sometimes traffic lights don't solve it. But there might be don't something more dangerous to have a light there because it distracts people. Is that a fair it's, statement? It's, it's so yes, there's a lot of activity. And they do have engineers that, uh, you know, we're having experts in the field mm -hmm. tell us recommendations to make it safer. We're just not, you know, making these decisions well, ourselves. Other right? alternatives than a bridge, right? Wasn't the, uh, well, we, we did. Um, as it's directed by the committee, we were asked to look at a realignment. Mm -hmm. There is a signal, you know, to the north. So how do we get people to that signal, cross at that signal, and then get back on the alignment? Um, that study is underway. Uh, we are expecting it to complete by the end of the year. Um, we are looking at an over-under just because I think we'd be missed if we're doing a study to mm -hmm. not at least evaluate the cost and yeah. the impacts. If there's utilities, there is ComEd wires in close proximity, so you do have to stay away from those when you're on a steel bridge. Yeah. Electricity and steel don't always go well together. So, um, so we are looking at them high-level um, um, cost estimate, but high-level study just to determine next steps for uh, the next funding cycle. Jim? Yeah. Thanks, Chris. And, you know, I ran into Don Kirchenberg, and I think he misinterpreted my words. Like, he says, well, you know, you, Jim Zay didn't even know staff. No, when I was talking about fatalities, major accidents there, that's what I was talking about. I mean, our staff has kept us up to date on everything on this. And I think the bigger issue is since those, since that little townhome community came in, now they run a sidewalk southbound on County Farm. So I think the problem they're having right now is these bikers are coming, they're coming down County Farm and they're cutting across Hawthorne to the west side of that other trail that goes through, that starts at Hawthorne Lane. There. Geneva, yeah. and you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The Geneva Spur right, right there. So you see people, instead of crossing at the County Farm grade, they're turning and going southbound and, and doing a diagonal cross at whatever that Timber Creek is across the Hawthorne Lane, you can see where that little white box is there on the one side. Mm -hmm. That's another trail there that goes that way. People are cutting across that way, which I, is a concern to me because maybe there's some signage we could do that the bicycle with the line or something because they're coming down that way. You know what I mean? Just mm -hmm. maybe we can put up on both sides so people realize, because I see a lot of people doing that. They're, they're cutting down and they're cutting across and going that way. I mean, that's I think that's where one of the accidents were that happened was down at this this area and the problem is i mean it's you're at 40 now i mean it's kind of a a drop when you come off of great western trail it kind of comes down so people are clipping along and you know, might not see somebody cutting across county farm at that location but well, reducing the speed was a big thing i think yeah, it's helpful safety, you know. right and i think the other thing one of the things that as you mentioned when sid talked about the mobility plan i'm sorry the trails plan one of the things they identified is where two trails intersect we could probably do a little bit better about telling people what they're intersecting with and maybe some directional signing so maybe on the great western trail to direct put a sign to, 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 to cross there across the instead of and thinking goes, the sidewalk there. and the new sidewalk on the east side is going to get them to where they want to go and so that's something that we can definitely definitely look at and that's kind of a product of the trails plan because i see a lot of people that Yep. turn there go down and they diagonal across the geneva spur and that's you know there's really not a crossing there right, right. i mean they're yep. just going diagonal across the streets which you know yep. that's a good stable. point and we'll look at the we'll get that signing uh evaluated and get something up there all right thank you anybody have anything else on this that we'll go into our discussion item b i got i want 56 i want 53 i 55 my yeah. have payments right so yeah, oh that's right i'm sorry transfer. Yeah. I will look forward to your update about the railroads. Yes, yes. Thank you. Um, so real quick, I sent an email yesterday um, in relation to this topic. It's kind of a lot to digest, so I hope you have a chance to review the email. But um, so the Illinois Department of Transportation is finally moving forward with the schedule for the complete reconstruction of Butterfield Road from 53 East to 355. It's been a priority for DuPage County for quite some time. Um, we like to see the 53 section go as well, but right now that's not programmed. And so as part of that process, they had ind indicated under, the, under a new state statute, historically, if you wanted bike paths or sidewalks, there was always a 20% local contribution. 
that changed um, in the last legislative cycle, that the state of Illinois is part of the projects, it's part of their complete streets, they will fund 100% of warranted bike paths and sidewalks. However, the legislation didn't go far enough to say, so who's going to maintain and own these facilities? So um, they are proposing a rather robust bicycle and um, sidewalk network. And as part of that, they developed an exhibit initially, which, I, which you all share in front of you, that identified jurisdictional responsibilities for the Butterfield Road project. And that's, that's kind of the east-west line at the top. And so you see highlighted in yellow are all the locations of bike path that they identified as DuPage County responsibility. Um, they said based on prior communication, I, I don't remember uh, recalling prior communication. We'll get to the green later. So on the on the yellow, Sid sat in on a meeting recently. And so Glen Allen was there, Forest Preserve District, Butterfield Park District. And what came out of that is um, the municipalities, Glen Allen and or the Butterfield Park District are willing to take on long-term ownership and maintenance of the path themselves. What the Butterfield Park District did not want is the long-term responsibility for the bridge over the East Branch. It will be a separate bridge. Um, it's not uncommon for DuPage County DOT to step in in situations like this for the continuity of our multimodal network. We have locations of sidewalk along 64, when I'd have to those projects that we are responsible for. We actually own at least one bridge that I'm aware of. Um, as part of Elgin O'Hare, there's the bridge uh, Thorndale, what used to be Thorndale over the um, Salt Creek. Um, the locals took the road on either side. We kept the bridge. No one wants an expensive bridge to remove and replace in the future. So, um, so the discussion point here today is given how Glen Allen and the Park District have stepped up, this east-west alignment is very critical to our East Branch DuPage River Trail, which is north-south. It provides east-west continuity. And so the question of DuPage County was, would there be a willingness for us to take over the bridge? Um, again, it's not uncommon. I would pay 100% to construct it, and uh, our responsibility would be periodic inspections, maintenance, and ultimately replacement of it. What's unique is that the state of Illinois is reconstructing Butterfield Road, but they're not touching the bridge over the East Branch. My recommendation is any IGA we sign into, we take the bridge now, if that's the, the direction of the committee, but that the IGA indicates when IDOT does have to go and replace that bridge, that we funnel the path to be coterminous with that bridge, and then IDOT would have the bridge, and then we have some responsibility for the, the balance of it, you know, the extra width. Um, it's surprising to me that you would reconstruct a road and not take off the bridge, you know, everything at the same time, but the bridge is only 20 years old, allegedly. So I think this is going to be a more... What does that mean, allegedly? Uh, well, I'm, I'm sorry. It, they said it's 20 years old. I was not aware that they replaced it um, in the last 20 years. I tried that all the time going Home Depot. And, uh, usually 40 years useful life. Well, usually it's a 75, you know, you design for 50 years. So the thought is when Ida builds this, builds the new bike path that's exclusively for the path, it's a smaller, it's a pedestrian bridge. It's not as robust as a roadway bridge, right. but there might be the opportunity down the line when IDOT has to remove the bridge over um, carrying Butterfield Road over these branch, we might be able to partner with them to bring that, the, the new bridge they built today and bring it into the road and then get rid of a bridge for our maintenance. So um, for discussion, we'll need to, to kind of have discussion, but, but I think staff's recommendation would be is, is for the continuity of the trail. This path exists today. No one knows how it got there, who owns what, but it does serve in a large residential community and we do connect with the Butterfield Park District amenities, which are, which are numerous. Are you seeking us to give you authority to the intergovernmental agreement? Is that what we would yeah, we would consensus. Consensus. So, consensus. Right. so is anybody, everybody? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll go with that. Yeah. Go on, sorry, go with that. Okay. Yeah. And then we'll bring forward a formal IGA when that when that right. gets prepared. So this has nothing to do with what you were just talking about, but how far west does um, how far west are are we um what am I trying to say? I'm sorry, I'm super tired. Um responsible for butterfield growth. Does do we go as far as Viola? So we have no responsibility for Butterfield Road. Oh, okay. It's Illinois Route 56. So the state of Illinois, they build these multimodal amen uh, amenities. They have a complete streets policy, but it's always been their practice. They maintain the roadways and they look for local uh, local agencies or partnerships for the bike paths and the sidewalks and the like. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Great report.
All right, so that takes us to item 12. Any report from our state's attorney? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Now we have old business. I think Chris was in Washington and is going to yeah, give us a report as far as your testimony. Yeah, what an exciting opportunity for me personally to, to be asked to go there and testify in front of the, the STB. Um, there was a coalition of us. Many mayors and village managers went, but there was just five of us designated to speak in front of, uh, in front of this board. Uh, the railroad was given 90 minutes after four hours. We broke for lunch and then we came back later in the day. But nonetheless, we got our 30 minutes. I think we expressed the coalition's uh, position um, opposed to this merger as, as proposed. DuPage County, Bill, um, heavily involved in the traffic uh, studies to demonstrate what these 8 to 14 trains will do in terms of daily um, impacts to motorists. And then when you analyze that, it, it's hundreds of thousands, it's 4 million more vehicles are going to be stopped because of this merger. So I think it resonated really well. I think we covered the issues of, of, of obviously community impacts, noise impacts, vibration, and traffic impact. The biggest thing, emergency responders, um, you know, these trains will be two miles plus long. So they're going to block whole communities. And so um, the fact that we continue to be referred to throughout the hearing, it was the one day I was there as the coalition. Uh, we had some branding going into this. Uh, other communities throughout the country, this is from Canada to Mexico, did not have the recognition and, and the, the, um, uh, the, the, the broadness of, of how many communities we brought there. So um, they were taken to task. The STB asked very good questions. Marty Overman, former Metro chair, uh, asked some really good questions. They're very quiet about the actual number of trains. Is it eight? Is it 14? Is it organic? What's the cap? Can't answer that. It's private. Um, so be amended and modified and increased. That's the key. Right. So we talked about mitigation strategies, great separations, uh, quiet zones, four quad gates, um, uh, discuss building um, a facility further west. Why do you have to come all the way to Bensonville only to leave? And so we'll see where that goes. There is no schedule. The draft public hearing, com public uh, draft EIS comments are due in a week or two. And then at the STB hearing was supposed to end last Friday. It's going through this whole week. That tells you how many people are interested at the national level, and so we'll uh, we'll see where it goes. Um, but it was it was interesting. It was a great experience, and um, um, I was, the, the flight there and back was it was delayed, canceled. I lost my flight home because it was canceled the night before. Anyway, I made it back. So okay. I just see see some Russia Russia Krishnamurthy's testimony at the committee yeah. on it. And I was asked to cut tape for that, but then I was asked to find anybody who um, was in favor of this. I couldn't find anybody. Who was well, it would be the CP Railroad. <laughs> exactly. That was about that's it. about it. Yeah, exactly. is, there, is there a future date that uh, is significant for the committee to know about? Uh, well, you will submit comments. I'll probably update the committee on what our ultimate comments were, the kind of the themes of them. And then in terms of an STB board decision, we're unclear on when, when that will be and whether there's going to be a decision with mitigation and what that mitigation will be and, and, and the like. There is today a press conference at 11.15, a Senator Durbin um, will be doing a press conference. Uh, we did get to meet, I did have to come back um, home, so, um, but we did meet with Duckworth and Quigley and um, uh, Raj, uh, Chris Miller's office, as well as Durbin. We just didn't get enough time with Senator Durbin. So he was kind enough to come out today, probably for other reasons, but he's holding a press conference today, sh very shortly. Um, on this I, issue. On this issue. So we're, I'm excited to see what he has to say. And, yeah. and we've had incredible delegation uh, support for this. In fact, our, uh, uh, Congressman Chris Murthy actually spoke for speaker, you know, at the event, kind of set the tone, you know, that, um, you know, the public shouldn't have to um, um, fund and, and we ought to be considered when you make a $31 billion private investment, you know, there's got to be a, a local consideration. Yeah, so I'm glad we have a seat at the table because at least they're hearing our concerns. They are. They I don't are. understand how they can't nail down the number of trains. They, I don't, I don't understand why they're saying they won't do it. They just won't. But they can't, they won't. What they refer to is the transaction, the acquisition will increase trains by eight. Right. Okay, they don't talk about the, the new markets that are going to open up and things like that. And, right. and we do know that. But, but I mean, shouldn't they be forced to? Yes, they've been taking the task on that to come back. They have closing arguments, maybe Thursday, Friday. And I know they were specifically asked, so it would be really good for these communities and Metro. Right. Metro. Transparency is kind of important, you think? Yeah. yeah. What is the number? Is there a cap? Can we put a cap? Or should we open to a cap? So, you know, the STV can. There's a lot of flexibility. The CN, EJ, and E merger kind of opened the door. First time ever that the STB actually imposed um, mitigation strategies, including 
um, great separations, which the railroad had to fund two thirds of, which is unprecedented. So, yeah. And just to reiterate, I know Mary Ozai talked about this in uh, County Board or one of our other meetings, but the railroad industry, that is one of the most powerful industries in this country. And even all our might as, um, you know, the, our coalition, we are, this is really a David versus Goliath. Yes, and, that's usually, a good analogy. and usually these railroads come out on top. I mean, we, for us they to might get be the meetings to, that we've got, it's was huge, impressive. it's huge, yes. right? And they may so, make a few changes, yeah, but so it's going to go through. Yeah. It's going to happen, and all we can hope is that they, you know, don't want to make enemies. We, we limited as much as we can. That's right. And maybe get the mitigation plan so we're going to get some, some well, yeah, bridges underneath, like uh, so that there isn't some stoppage for traffic and there's more safety. Paid for by them. Yes. Paid for by them. Paid for by them. Absolutely. That's what we're. Brian, thank you to come speak for me there, Chris. In three weeks, they got the, the Prevent Tragedy on the Track Rail Conference by one of the three panelists because of the Belmont Hunter Pass. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, so good. We, yeah, maybe we can collaborate on that. Yeah. We've got CMAP and uh, mm -hmm. somebody else speaking, I guess. But I could get you to speak instead. No, no. <laughs> I, I only do DC now. I'm on the DC yeah. circuit. You're on the national circuit. <laughs> <season. laughs> you don't go local. Yeah. Uh, give me some. Point point I, I have a quick thing. I left you a message regarding um, College I, Road. I called that lady back and left her a message. Did you? Okay. So, yes. will it be a traffic study done regarding? I know that Chris that, and I talked about. Is that the one we're talking about? The construction project right now? There or? is a construction on Yackley Avenue. I, I thought her issue was construction traffic, and we said yes, the police are aware of it. They're scrolling down, they're putting tarps on their loads, and they're watering it. So, it seems to me there's been some effort on their part to minimize what is the problem. Yeah, so maybe two or three meetings ago, there was a, a number of people on 75th Yackley College that kind of came in to talk. And we had 75th Street under construction, Hobson under construction in Yackley. So it's not surprising there'd be more trucks. Uh, we did reach out to the sheriff's office to ask them to do some selective enforcement of the tarps being down okay. um, as, as required by law. And then the other thing we, I did talk to one of the homeowners association and, and uh, chairman uh, Charles and I discussed that after this construction season, let's do something next spring to see was that an anomaly? Was it in fact, you know, okay. do the truck volumes next spring when all this work right. is done? Okay. Does that align with historic years and back to historic trends? That makes sense. Okay. Most of those roads aren't, aren't they? They're controlled by the municipalities. So the tarps down. I mean, yeah, there's the sheriff's not going to be issued those tickets. There was a there's a section of unincorporated on 75th Street. They come up green, make a left, yeah, go the west. Majority so, that was, right. was the village. Yeah, Woodridge and Lyle. Mm -hmm. So they were they alerted? Um, they're the ones that need to do the enforcement. The, the specific request. And, and what they observed was coming out of Barber's Corners um, um, facility and then making the, the right, specific be, location was kind of an unincorporated section. Of like three street. different subdivisions of three different people not coordinated all come with the same question. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, the problem. Mm -hmm. Somebody ought to diversify that because we talked to four people and tell them the same information. But mm -hmm. yes, I hear what you're saying. Yep. All right. Is that, okay. is that it for old business? That's it for old. All well, right. Now we have. New, New business, as Chairman Cronin so, would say. That's something that hasn't been discussed. <laughs> so I would like to say, getting back to our 56 discussion, um, the, the agenda was very specific to the bike path maintenance. I realized when I was looking at the exhibit, the state of Illinois is also asking DuPage County to take responsibility of the residential side of the noise walls. Previous conversations with the township, unincorporated, would usually go to the township and then higher up. Uh, previous discussion with the township, they were opposed to it. So this is not the first time we've been approached with this. The main reason for maintaining the backsides of the wall is graffiti, mowing, and litter. These are in a residential area. They're going to be people's backyards. And realistically, people are going to maintain that area as if it's their own yard. So in the past, we, DuPage County, when this came up on, I think it was Butterfield Road in the Arrowhead area, it came up. And, and we don't have, you know, Ida says they can't access it. Well, how can we access the area that they can't access? So, um, you know, so I'm kind of just looking for direction again. They're, they're going to be doing this IGA that historically we've said um, no, and the walls have still gone up. And to my knowledge, there's been no complaints of graffiti, mowing, or litter. Because again, when you back up to residential, they're more likely to treat it as their backyard. Okay. So just looking for direction from the committee to kind of, um, you know, stay that stay the course when the IGA comes. They'll probably put it in there. We'll probably have some back and forth with the review. Um, but um, I did let them know that I would respond on that 
issue as well. So and your, your opinion was that it's more appropriate for the township to? No, I think it's it, I think it's very natural for the residents to just assume that okay. that because it will be their rear yard. Yeah. To a certain extent, but if you're talking something like a, 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 something has to be substantially changed or a, a, well, let me let me be clear on this. I dot will make I dot will have the responsibility for the wall okay, structural okay, inspections. If a car happens to go off the road and hit it yeah, and so damage it, they're responsible for it. Mm -hmm. I dot just said if you know someone goes and graffitis it or there's litter back there, we can't get behind there. So let's ask the township and the county. Well, we can't get behind there either. Yeah, we're, we're, it's someone's backyard. So. Um, I think I think um, if there's if there's support to kind of continue where we've been in the past to stay the course. Of stay don't course. we have an easement on that? Oh, it seems to me we could have an easement on that uh, homeowner side. I don't would acquire an easement to build it because they actually have to get on the property to build right, it and construct right. with equipment. But then when they're done, the easement goes away. Wow. Exactly. So, I, I think we're all in agreement that we maintain a present policy and procedures. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. That's it. That's it. All right, I'm, I'm told we do have accepted the session. So mm -hmm. I have a motion to so the open meetings at 5 ILCS 1.2.25 purchase of real property for use by public body. I have a motion to second. So moved. Second. All right, they have a roll call vote. Chaplain? Aye. Desart? Aye. Krajewski? Aye. Ozog? Kuchelski? Aye. Zay? Aye. All right, we are now in closed session. And may we 